Hey everyone, we're out in the shop today talking about the RN engine conversion. So first we're going to talk about what it is and why you'd want it. So the earlier engines uh, in the Volvo lineup from kind of when the white block five cylinders first came to be uh, existed up until about 1998 and are known as the N engine or also just known as the white block. And then in 1999 the RN, the revision N motor, came to life and there was a number of revisions between 99 and 2003, although the actual block itself exists all the way up to 2009. And the RN's got a lot of benefits to it. Um, first of all, it's a lot more prevalent and available. Uh, these earlier in motors are harder to find. When you do find them, they tend to have a lot of mileage. And they're not necessarily something you want to plug and play into your car with 200,000 plus miles in an unknown condition. And the RN motors are fairly easy to fit to the cars. They don't take very much modification at all. Uh, they're much more prevalent, less costly, lower miles, and there's a lot of benefits with both the camshaft design, the cylinder head flow, uh, bottom ends of the motors tend to be stronger, a little bit more simple and easier to work with. Uh, but there are some caveats to making them fit, so we're going to take a little bit of time and go over what exactly does it take to do an RN conversion into my early in-motor car. Alright, so what does it take to actually fit this thing in the car? Now, most of the parts on your early motor are going to swap right over to the later motor. So thermostat housing, the actual intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, uh, all your cap rotor, spark plugs and wires are going to swap over. A little bit of fitment on that, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, obviously, the timing belt scenarios are different. This one is the uh, automatic style with the hydraulic tensioner, where this one is more of the mechanical style. Uh, but you'll want to do a new timing belt and water pump and all that stuff anyway when you get to that point. Now, this engine has the variable valve timing solenoid on it, where obviously the early motor doesn't, and your wiring harness isn't going to support that. But fortunately, the way the solenoid works is when it's not powered, it's wide open, allowing oil pressure to flow into the head and hold it locked at effectively the zero position. So you really don't have to do anything with it other than just leave it alone. Now from there, we will have to do a little bit of work on the back of the camshafts to get our rotor plate and our cam sensor to fit. Uh, but the rest of the stuff is going to swap right over, including all of our PCV lines, like I say, intake manifold, uh, throttle body, and all the rest of it. So now let's look at the stuff that isn't going to swap over that's going to take a little bit of modification. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure we can actually bolt the engine into the car. That starts with the motor mount. Now, the other motor mounts in the car are going to be the same, so you're fine there, but the forward motor mount, meaning forward of the car, or basically on the side of the engine, is going to have to change. The original motor mount here isn't going to fit on this block. It's of a different design, and it just simply doesn't bolt up. Uh, the holes are too small, and they're spread too wide. So you'll need the later engine bracket, which comes on the 99 to 2000 S&V 70 cars and C70 up to 04 to fit it directly to your subframe. One of the things we're going to need to change is the crank sensor. The crank sensor from the M motor and its bracket will need to replace this original crank sensor, which is quite a bit different on the RN engine, but it bolts right into place, sits right there. And then we'll also need to take off this 17 millimeter fitting that goes into a water pipe for the original PCV system, and we'll want to plug it with a 12 by 150 plug like this guy here. Now that the back pipes are set up, let's take a look at the cams. Now one of the first things we're going to run into is the cam sensor on this side, on the exhaust side, is not going to be the same as the early ones, so we're going to simply want to remove that. Uh, now one thing you're going to notice is on this side, for instance, we're going to take this plug out and we're going to find there's no cam seal in there. So once we take this plug out, which is going to allow us to put in our distributor rotor and our distributor cap, we're going to need a cam seal to go in there. And once that cam seal's in, we're going to need to put in the rotor plate that holds the rotor. Now in this case, the actual diameter of the rotor plate is larger than the diameter of the camshaft. So it won't actually fit and nest in there properly until you drill it out. So what we end up doing is we'll take, for instance, I've already done it here on the exhaust side with our cam sensor. Uh, we'll take and drill it out to 7 16 which allows us to drop that cam sensor right in there. And a 7 16 drill, drilling in about uh, maybe 7 16 of an inch or not even quite that, will open up that camshaft enough for you to allow to get the cam plate in there. Uh, but you don't want to drill in so far that you hit the threads and don't damage the threads. So, but it's pretty easy to see when you get in there, uh, and then you can get your cams set up on both sides. So again, we drill out our cams on both sides. Get our cam plate, our rotor plate, and of course, don't forget to put your cam seal in because there won't be one there initially. All right, now it's time to fit your turbo. Now, if you're lucky and your RN motor came with all your oil and cooler lines, then you're good to go and you can utilize those because your earlier lines are going to be different. They've got a barb fitting on the end with a little rubber hose where the later RN have this O-ring and our compression fitting into the tubing here. Now, if you don't have the oil lines that came with your RN motor, you're probably going to have to take and knock out your back water pipe and swap that with the original pipe from your original motor. And it's not hard to do. There's a fitment bolt here, two bolts right here, and we slide the whole assembly out 
The downside is if you do that, then you're going to end up losing your back oil cooler, which means you'll probably have to swap oil pans so that you can have your accessory oil cooler that you had on your original engine. Okay, one of the final caveats to this install is taking a look at the intake ports on the factory RN motor. We'll see that they've got this real curvy shape to the top, which is quite a bit different than the manifold on the in motor. You can see it's got these two little bumps here and here, uh, bump outs for the injector port. So what we're going to want to do is go over here like these and we want to smooth those out a little bit progressively until you get that nice same D shape on the port uh, so you have nice matching laminar airflow. Okay, now that we've got our turbo and our lines installed, we can see that we actually were able to use the new style lines with the compression fittings instead of the old style with the barb and the rubber hose. Uh, we still use our factory drain line, that's still the same as before. Uh, we use the feed oil feed line that came with our new motor, but as you can see, we've got our cooling ports now on the back side of the turbo instead of one on the front and one on the rear. So that's one of the functions of the new lines with the RN engine that you'll have to account for. Uh, generally what we do is we just go ahead and cap the one on the back here. See him right down there, we just put a 12 by 150 cap in it. And then for the rear, uh, we just simply knock out the freeze plug for the back of this 15G turbo and then thread it with a 12 by 150 tap uh, for that lower line. So the hole is already there, you just got to pop the freeze plug out, tap it, and then you're good to go.